post the session. I, I will post the session <clears throat> for those who would have missed it. I believe um, the others probably thinking, well, we already had class on Wednesday. So, all right. So today, let me... Let me know if you all are able to see my screen. Can you all see my screen? Yes or no? Can you all see my screen? Yes. Okay. Are you all able to see it clearly or does it look fuzzy? Enough. I can't hear you. Ishan, what did you say? Yes, I said it looks okay. Okay, great. All right, so let's do a super quick recap. All right. So in portfolio development, there are seven parts of a portfolio, right? From the moment you all came in to form two, this is what I would have started with you all, all right? So far, we have looked at two parts or two components of the portfolio. Can you all remember any of those parts or components in the portfolio we would have looked at? Nobody? All right, so the two components we would have looked at is the problem defined and evidence of research. All right, so as I said, if you go into Google Classroom and you check under classwork, these are some of the headings that you would have actually seen. All right, um, I would have shown you all how to go through and do the problem defined uh, parts of the portfolio, and we would have looked at evidence of research, which is where you basically give credit to whatever information that you would have taken to do your problem defined. All right, and this is basically to avoid plagiarism. All right, so moving ahead quickly, part three of your portfolio is where you have to do what is known as your possible solutions and rationale. All right. So what is possible solutions? Does anybody want to help uh, move along with the definition of what you think possible solutions might mean? Isaiah? There's different ways you could solve the same puzzle. Okay. Okay, Sean, very good. So possible solutions, it's finding a solution to a problem which usually involves constructing a course of action that will transform your current situation into one way your objective has been achieved. Remember when we were looking at the activity sheet and the various parts of the activity sheets, there's something known as your, speci your, your specifications and your specification tells you when it is you go about solving the challenge or solving the problem, this is, this is what you need to use in order to reach to that particular point. All right, so that's very good, uh, Itcha. The next part, so it's possible solutions and rationale. What do you think a rationale is? I know that might be a new term for many of you all. What do you think a rationale might be? Anybody wants to try? Christian, you wanna try? Is Christian there? I saw he came into Google Classroom. Yes, Christian. I, I saw Christian Hawkeye come in. Okay, I guess he got bumped off. Okay, so what is what is your rationale? Your rationale is a basic explanation or reason for something. All right, so when it is you have to do the part three of your portfolio, you have to come up with different ways of solving the problem and at the same time give a reason why it is you think that particular way may help solve the problem. 
All right, so you are in your outlining your uh, possible sol your solution as well as your reason for doing so. All right, so that's as simple as it gets. So in the mark scheme, just to show you all where I'm even getting this information. All right, you will see portfolio to the top here. So this is this is where I'm getting all the information from. You will see problem defined as a major heading. All right, then evidence of research. And as I said, the third part, possible solutions and rationale. Now in part of coming up with your possible solution, you have to put a description as well. So apart from giving your rationale or reason um, for looking at this as a possible solution, you have to put a description Right, so a description could be a one or two lines or sentences describing what the solution is uh, hoping to achieve, right? And then you would see here annotated sketch. All right, so this is this is the central part of what we are going to be looking at today, because many times, um, seeing as I do teach agricultural technology. I don't teach the annotated sketch part. So many times, students who are doing NCSE and they choose a topic based in agricultural science, I usually just have them, you know, do like a rough sketch of something, but really and truly, there's so much more involved in doing an annotated sketch. All right, so I know some of you may not know what an annotated sketch is. So what is an annotated sketch? An annotated sketch is a detailed sketch that is labeled with critical dimensions, notes, and symbols. And as I indicated, these are not things that you will learn in agricultural science, all right? When we were in class discussing uh, what other subject areas, you may learn how to do a detailed sketch that may contain dimensions and all of that. Um, I believe it was Rihanna who said, um, I, and she was quite correct, all right? When you all are doing industrial arts, this is where you would usually do your technical drawing and so on. Um, I'm not sure, have you all had the opportunity to do any uh, classes with Miss Prim Chan in Form 1? Yes, yes. Okay, did you all get the opportunity to do any uh, sketching or drawing with her? Yes, yes. Okay, great. So this would be, a, in a sense, like a, a refresher on what you would have learned, right? So this is an example when we say to do an annotated sketch, all right? Forget what the diagram itself is about. Um, just look at the fact that the uh, person who completed this, they gave a description, all right? So this is what these few sentences to the top here is. It's a description then they would have uh, done the sketch. And as you can see, a sketch does not look perfect, all right? It doesn't look um, like a computer generated image. It looks freehand as if you are drawing with it using your hands, all right? And the parts of the sketch is also labeled. So as um, you know, the teacher who is going to be viewing that part of the portfolio, I'm able to see step-by-step step and notice the person use numbers and so on. So you start with one, and you finish at five. So that way, as the viewer, you are not looking all over the place and things are not looking crazy and out of place. You are labeling things accordingly so you realize that it's moving in a particular uh, pattern, all right? So this is just to give you an idea what I mean by an annotated sketch, all right? So you see your annotated sketch have your description and it also have um, you know, your labeling and so on. And where applicable, if you have dimensions, you can put in dimensions, right? So dimensions meaning measurements and so on, all right? Is everybody clear so far? You all understand um, what possible solutions mean, what is a rationale, and what I mean by an annotated sketch? Yes, miss. Okay, great. So now we move on to... Uh, the actual sketching and drawing. And to help us um, with the sketching and drawing explanation, right, Miss Premchan did, as I said, she did a little um, 
a little presentation, a short presentation. So I'm just going to play that. Um, it, the presentation itself is six minutes long, but I'm going to do pausing in between just to make sure that you all are following along and nobody's lost. Uh, but at the same time, you all can stop me and I will pause the video and take any questions you all may have. All right, so I'm going to press play. Let me know. Let me know if when I press play, if you all can hear. All right, let me turn up my volume. I don't know if that would help. Good day. This is Ms. Frimchan, and I will be doing a brief introduction into engineering sketching. Are you all able to hear? Yes, Ms. Okay, I'm trying to increase my volume and I don't know why it's been stuck at eight, but I'm trying to get my computer volume up and it's not working. So once you all are able to hear, I guess that's most important. So what is sketching? Sketching is one of the best ways to communicate one's ideas through the use of pictures or drawings. Sketching versus drawing in engineering design. Sketching generally means freehand drawing, whereas drawing usually means using drawing instruments such as a compass or computers that can create very detailed drawing. For this lesson, we will be treating sketching and drawing as the same. The purpose of sketching. You can quickly and easily get an idea on paper. You can also record or develop an idea for later use. Sketching includes sketching designs, freehand technical sketches, and technical illustrations. For the purpose of this brief lesson, we'll be discussing design sketches. So design sketches are rough sketches that are used to quickly capture an idea. It has less detail and structure, right? So you can briefly look at some freehand sketching. So sketching materials. Some of the materials that you would use for sketching include paper, eraser, pencil sharpener, um, pencils, usually soft lead. We can also use mechanical pencils as well. And optional is grid paper, paper with lines and boxes in it, which can you be used as a guide, especially when you're now starting the sketching process. Now, we're going to deal with two sketching techniques today. The first one being proportion. Now, proportion is the relation in size between various parts of a drawing. Right? All the parts are are the correct size when compared to the other, other parts. So if you look at the sharpener in the picture here, the hole which you would be used to insert the pencil to sharpen is the correct size with respect to the other parts of the drawing, the size of the sharpener, the blade, and so on. So you would say that this drawing is in proportion. Clarity is the quality of being easy to see or the sharpness of the edge of the image. So if you look at the picture again, the sharpener, you'll see that picture four is more clear that you're able to see the edges, the outline of the sharpener, and the details in the drawings are very clear. All right? So we want to look at some of the types of sketching lines that are used in sketching. We have vertical lines which run top to bottom. Right? We have long straight lines which we also call horizontal lines that run across the page we have diagonal lines that run across a diagonal or slant across how to sketch lines now one thing to note when drawing lines you always want to keep your eye at the end point so a line will start at one point and end at the other Keeping your eye at the end point will help you to focus your hand to get to that point and you're most, more likely to um, draw better lines. When sketching circles and arcs, we can use guides um, being um, crosses and boxes that help us to draw our circles within the limits of the 
boxes. So you see, we start off with a cross. We can sketch a square determined dependent on the size of the circle that we draw in. We can identify the diagonals, mark off the radii on the diagonals, and then we can sketch and darken our circle. The same applies for a radius, which is with an arc, sorry, which is a part of a circle. And you would identify you all right, I'm just going to pause here very quickly. Are you all able to follow along with what Miss is saying? When did you all sleep away? Yes, Miss, we follow. Okay, so it should be easy to follow because what she would have explained before in terms of the lines, right, she was speaking about diagonal lines and so on. So diagonal lines would be these lines that run in on a slant, all right? Um, your straight lines, your, so this is your vertical line, so it's running upwards, your horizontal line, which is running across. So basically, she's applying everything that she would have indicated previously, all right? And once you draw the lines, you are able to fill in your circle within those dimensions, and that way, you are guaranteed to have, even though you are doing freehand, right, of course, even though she mentioned using freehand, there are tools that you can use, um, a compass and so on, that you can use to help with the drawing of the circle parts here so that you get a neat circle with proper dimensions um, and so on, right? So where the sketch part looks very light, she said once you are, you know, you have completed uh, drawing your circle and you are sure, well, this is what you want to move on with, you can darken the circle all right, to make the image more clear. All right, so let's move on with the presentation. Using the radii of that circle, and then you're using the technique of keeping your eye to the end, you want to draw that arc, right? When we're sketching as well, apart from drawing lines, we also will be drawing different shapes and solid forms. So shapes include things like circles, squares, triangles, and the which are, and these are our 2D shapes, two dimensional. And then they can get into the form, solid forms, which are our three dimensional shapes, right? This diagram here shows the development of an object from a 2D shape, two dimensional shape, or um, into a three dimensional form. And that is how you would sketch. You would start with your basic lines, draw your basic shapes, and then you will give it a three-dimensional form, and then you will give it your detailing. Here is the wireframe where you will put the other ends, and they will be able to cut the details as desired. Right? Solid forms combine to create sketches, and this is where, as I mentioned before, a sketch or a drawing is just a combination of all the different types of lines, shapes, and solid forms that are pulled together to create that drawing or sketch. So this is all for today. Um, thank you. All right. So this is Miss Premchan. Okay. So Miss Premchan was able to share with you all. Um, when it is we are looking at an annotated sketch, we looked at some of the tools that you would need to go about uh, doing the sketch. What are some of the practices that you can employ or use when carrying about um, designing and sketching? All right. So um, is everybody clear uh, on what it is you have to do if it is you have to sketch a diagram? Yes, ma'am. Okay, lovely. So I have a little assignment for you all. This is a, a well, a take home assignment. I know you're already at home, but this is assign, an assignment for you all to do over the long weekend. And um, I would really appreciate uh, if it is you all could submit this uh, by Tuesday. So I will set it up in Google Classroom. We'll place the assignment in Google Classroom alongside the video if you all need to take over, um, you know, I'll look at what Ms. Primchan would have said. So using what you have learned about sketching, I want you all to create an annotated sketch of a self-watering container planter. 
All right, so you may need to do a little research. First, you will need to know what a self-watering container planter looks like. And then you are going to have to sketch, do an annotated sketch. So you'll have to put a little description. And when you do your sketching, you're going to have to put in little dimensions and labels and so on, label each part and so on, right? It is a marked assignment, all right? And as I said, it is a long weekend, so you all will have the opportunity to be able to do it. And because it's a sketch and it's not something that's going to have to look perfect, all right, that should, I believe, take some of the pressure off of you where you feel like you need to do this insanely perfect uh, diagram. All right, so one of the things is using clear unlined paper, so like a printer paper. I want you all to put your name to the top of it. And when you sketch it, you take a picture and you can either email it directly to me using my um, email address on Google Classroom, which is missapuagria.gmail.com, or you can upload it directly onto the assignment tab once I post on Google Classroom. All right, so. Do y'all have any questions? Miss, can you like repost this video on Google Classroom? Yes, yes, I will. I will be posting as soon as it's finished recording. Um, it takes some time for the video to be processed, though. I think it takes up, well, depending on my Wi-Fi connection. Um, but you will be able to view it at least by the end of the day. Once you click on it, you should be able to view it. All right, if, one, if I post it, if you try to look at the video immediately, because it will still be processing to be uploaded onto Google Classroom, you're not going to be able to access it. All right, so you're gonna have to wait a little bit, uh, even if I do so um, right away. But other than that, yes, it will be available to you. All right, any more questions uh, regarding what it is you all have to do or everybody clear? I'm going to mean that silence means to move on. All right, so if you all have no more questions, that is the end of my presentation. All right, thank you all so much for joining in class today. Okay, I'm now seeing two comments. Um, okay, so I'm gonna to end today's uh, class now. We are just over by a minute. So let me stop recording.